meow. Hi everyone, Wolfany Meow Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new deluxe expand expanded edition of Sexy Red's Hood Hottest Princess, Missouri rapper Sexy Red. It is not news that over the past five years, the ratio of women to men hitting it big in hip hop has kind of been flipped on its head. The days of a single Lil Kim or Nicki Minaj uh, dominating for female rappers in the mainstream for like an entire decade are over. You could even say now we're reaching a point of saturation where a lot of new lady up and comers in hip hop are just kind of copying what artists who have been on the leaderboard for a minute have been doing, uh, your Cardi B's, your Megan The Stallions. But even through all that noise, there have been some significant commercial breakthroughs. Ice Spice probably being the biggest of them. But if there's a second major success story to come out of 2023 for women in rap, it is most definitely Sexy Red, who's been on an absolutely unstoppable run of viral singles where she seems to strike gold like every time. Whether it's the vulgar and ridiculous Pound Town or a ski and infectious call and response anthem, but there's actually more to Sexy Red than just a few fluke singles. Cause in a lot of ways, she's kind of the total package, which I know sounds ridiculous to your average rap snob who uh, would most likely take one look at her bars and just scoff. Cause yeah, she's no lyrical miracle, but personally I'll take style, attitude, sense of humor, song structure, and some really good hooks over a technical spitter any day. And Sexy Red has all that, and doesn't go a single song in this now 22 track project uh, without at least an attempt at a banger chorus. Furthermore, a lot of what's here is kind of proof of how simplicity reigns supreme when it comes to a lot of these southern hip hop and trap sounds. And that a loud and bold personality goes a long way with this type of stuff. With her almost squawky and instantly recognizable voice, which definitely makes her stand out but she's somebody who wears her influences on her sleeve in a creative way too. There are big Gangsta Boo and 3-6 Mafia vibes coming off of some of these tracks, but I think a lot of her clearest connections come by way of prime era Waka Flocka Flame, as well as Gucci Mane. I mean, the closing track to the standard version of Hottest Princess is literally female Gucci Mane. And because of that, in a way, Sexy Red serves as a reminder of a time when trap music wasn't quite as clean or or commercial or pop centric. I mean, the sound of the most popular artists in this genre has changed significantly over the past 10 years. And again, in a way, Sexy Red goes against that grain and she knows it, especially with bars like, uh, my name's Sexy Red, I ain't no singing ass bitch. Cause yeah, it's actually a breath of fresh air to have somebody like her coming onto the scene and do it in a way that feels so raw and aggressive and frankly, nasty. Nasty to the point where she doesn't completely line up with a lot of the high hypersexual lady rappers that have gotten popular over the last several years. Cause a lot of what Sexy Red says on her tracks isn't necessarily alluring or flattering or uh, said to appeal to men. It's more like an admission of what she wants, how bad she wants it, and how far she'll go to get it. And she really digs deep into her hedonistic uh, <laughs> vices here to the point where it can be concerning, but at the same time, she goes into it with so much confidence and authenticity, it's hard not to admire her energy. It's not that Sexy Red has absolutely no shame, it's that she can't be shamed by any other person or people, and however they may perceive or judge her. This is like a source of power for Sexy Red, and she knows it, as a lot of people might look at someone like her and think, oh, I can fix her, I can save her, which is exactly where songs like I Don't Wanna Be Saved come from, where Sexy spits in the face of that, not just with uh, brutally toxic bars about her doing whatever she wants to do, but she also brings a very snappy melody on the Tay Keith beat as well. The track Sexy Please hits pretty hard and proves that the anti-love trunk knockers are some of the best and most addictive songs on this entire project. And look, these two tracks are only a few of many on this expanded edition of the Go Hard As Hell because I actually wasn't expecting that much from these additional 11 cuts here. Because considering how popular Sexy Red has gotten over the past year, uh, she could have easily put out a deluxe that just kind of hands over a dozen or so unorganized, lame-ass freestyles that last barely 90 seconds or so, and, you know, just could have cashed in on that. But Sexy Red didn't 
do that. She actually put out 11 more songs that can go toe to toe with any material off of the original Hottest Princess, whether it's tracks like Bow 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 and Hold On Yeah, where she's really bringing it back to that 2011 Waka Flocka Flame energy, that aggression, but doing it now with more sex appeal and uh, hilarious topics like uh, her baby daddy cock blocking her. <laughs> There's even a bit of Chicago drill energy coming through on the track uh, Shake Your Dreads. Uh, of course, because of that, it's it's no surprise that we have a, a raw-ass Chief Key feature on this project as well on the song uh, Ghetto Princess, which is uh, very synthy and lyrically scathing with bars like, Hoes hating on me, you know I'm the shit. My brother already told me that pussy smell like fish. Uh, you thought you had some tea on me. Whole time you drink and piss. Sexy Red, the chosen one, I'm turned up, bitch, I'm it. And somehow from here, the lyricism and the energy gets even more unhinged, like on the track of Free, My Guy, which kicks off not only with um, <laughs> a child saying Free Dada on the track, but yeah, it's all about, uh, you know, her man getting out of prison, how excited she is to see him get the dick, raise hell, uh, saying stuff like, that's my baby, hell yeah, we in love. First day home, let him shoot up the club. There's also the uh, closing track on the deluxe edition that uh, uh, features Suki Hana, possibly the only rapper out there today that could really uh, match Sexy Red's unhinged and raunchy energy. If it's not gonna be Cupcake, it's gonna be Suki Hana, who of course is coming to this track with bars about sucking off Joe Biden and uh, being so wet she needs a panty liner. Clearly Sexy Red and Suki Hana have some real creative chemistry going for them to uh, come back collabing again after Born by the River and uh, somehow go even harder. I, I didn't think it would get crazier uh, than gave me money for abortion I ain't having his kids, but uh, they did it. There is actually some versatility to this deluxe edition of the Project 2. We have the uh, very soft R&B centric I Might with Summer Walker, where Sexy Red actually kind of takes to something uh, more subtle and intimate somewhat well. Was for sure smart of her to get Summer Walker in the mix on this one as I think uh, they have uh, pretty cohesive energies. There's also the slow burner intro on this record which uh, instrumentally brings some eerie synths to the table as well as these kind of uh, freaky, almost operatic choral bits hanging in the background making a sexy red song sound way more epic than it has any right to. And of course this deluxe edition gives us good reason to go back to a lot of those tracks from the original uh, edition of Hottest Princess and uh, just kind of hear once again what made that first 11 track run hit so hard. Like with Hellcat's SRTs, which sure the production, the recording on this one might be a bit scuffed, but uh, Sexy's personality comes through very boldly and hilariously on bars like uh, put the Benz in sport mode, uh, I ain't no regular hoe, uh, I don't do insurance for my whips, this ain't Geico. <laughs> There's also looking for the hoes, which uh, uh, is handily one of the catchiest tracks in this first 11 song run. There's the style and confidence and endless flexes that are just coming out rapid fire on Sexy Walk. There's nachos, which is a hilarious turn of phrase, uh, essentially saying like, you know, nachos nachos, nacho, nacho bitch, where we have lyrical highlights such as Sexy Red uh, saying that her pussy hits like Will Smith. There's also Mad at Me, which is a huge freak anthem all about having sex while angry, getting that uh, aggression out that way and just being a completely unrepentant, again, freak. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I gotta say, I gotta admit, I gotta be straightforward and say that uh, I'm loving this project. And while I was uh, astounded and stupefied uh, to some degree when I first caught wind of Sexy Red and, uh, you know, saw some of those bars that were going viral off the bat, you know, Coochie Pink, Booty Hole Brown, so on and so forth, uh, I, I am now very much a Sexy Red believer. As this is some of the most raw, ridiculous, over the top, unhinged, and out of control rap and trap that you are gonna hear this year. That was the case for the original version of this project, and all Sexy Red did with this deluxe is like literally double the fun, double the helping, just intensify it, bring better production, 
bring funnier bars, more antics, more chaos, more toxicity, more personality, and I can only hope that she finds a way to leapfrog what she's done here uh, down the road when she drops more stuff. I'm feeling a decent to strong eight on this transition. Have you given this album uh, a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best or the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Sexy Red, uh, forever.